Hello, in this presentation, we will record an adjusting journal entry for unearned revenue in QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you are following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitar problem. If not, that's okay. We will be recording and adjusting journal entry for unearned revenue at the end of the month, explaining what it is, why we're doing, and how to do it. We, if you have the backup file, you can restore that by going to the file and restore to get us to this point in time. We currently have the open windows tab open at the view open windows list to have this tab open, which we highly recommend. And we have the home tab is the only open window within the open window list that found at company and home page. We're going to have an adjusting journal entry, which will be recorded at the end of the time period, making our financial statements correct as of the end of that time period, as of that point in time. The concept of unearned revenue is often one of the more confusing types of adjusting journal entries when we're learning this in theory, and it's a little bit different of a problem that we're going to show here within QuickBooks. So we'll take a look at the theory and how it's a little bit different within QuickBooks and how QuickBooks record things a bit differently in order to account for this unearned revenue and what we need to do at the end of the time period to make it proper in accordance to accepted accounting principles uh, for the adjusting process. So in order to do that, let's go to reports up top. We're going to go to the company and financial and we will go to the balance sheet standard. We are going to adjust the dates up here, customize reports, and the dates are going to be 01012102282821, January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021. Okay, and here is our information. Now, when we see this typically in uh, theory type questions, what happens is that I'm going to go back to the home page real quick. Normally, in a normal process, in terms of our customers, we're going to get an invoice, then we're going to receive payment after we invoice, or we're going to receive payment at the same point in time. But there are some types of industries in which we're going to receive payment before we invoice the client, meaning we're going to get paid before we do the work. And there's a lot of industries, and it's actually a growing number of industries where that's going to happen because it happens a lot. If we're a newspaper distributor, clearly we get paid before we do the work. And if we are um, something like to have a concert or something like that, that's where we sell movie tickets before we actually perform the concert. The concert being the point in time that we should really be recording the revenue, not the point in time we get money because we haven't really earned it yet. We haven't performed the concert at the point in time that we receive the money. So there's going to be many instances, and in our case, we're selling guitars, and in that case, we may get a pre-order for a guitar that we will then go and order for a customer, and in so doing, we may want to get a deposit before we start doing the work. Or if we're going to do some kind of maintenance on the guitar or something like an amp or something like that, then we may want to get a deposit before we start doing work on that project. And therefore, we're getting the money before we start doing work. In a theory problem, usually in a textbook problem, what happens when we do that is when we get the money, we're going to debit or increase the cash account, and we're going to credit rather than revenue, we're going to credit unearned revenue. And typically, we'll have an unearned revenue on the books, and then we'll have to figure out how much of that revenue has been earned, and then take it out of unearned revenue and record income at that point in time. In the QuickBooks uh, concept, the way we've been building this problem, it's a bit different. And that part of the reason for that is the way QuickBooks is set up and the way QuickBooks can tie together the uh, customer payments with the uh, prepayments with the invoice. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to say that QuickBooks is going to have a receive payment before we create the invoice, meaning we're getting money before we do the work. But we would still like to tie the fact that we got that money to the invoice that we will create in the future. In order for QuickBooks to be allowed to do that, they've got to use the customer field. And in order to use the customer field, they have to link it to accounts receivable. So in essence, if we go back to the balance sheet, when we did this, when we received this payment, if we go back here, if we received this payment, 
it did not we deb we increased cash we received cash but we didn't credit or we didn't increase this account this liability account called unearned revenue as we would do in theory quickbooks made a negative receivable and said so instead of increasing the liability it made a negative receivable so let's see what that means on the balance sheet if we go to the balance sheet normally we would have um we we know that that uh, cash went up after we deposited it cash went up uh, undeposited funds went up and then we deposited into cash and the other side would be a liability called uh, unearned revenue however quickbooks didn't do that it put it into a negative asset account so instead of having a positive liability rec reconciling or representing that we owe work in the future we have a, a negative receivable uh, and on the balance sheet let's see what that looks like in terms of a report by customer if we go to reports and we go to uh, customers and receivables and we scroll down to the customer balance detail I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom here and we can see an example of this we have this three hundred dollars of negative three hundred dollars in the customer receivable for string music that shouldn't be we shouldn't have a negative receivable there's no such thing as a negative receivable that means that we owe somebody else something and if we owe somebody else something that's a liability it's not an asset it's not a receivable so if we double click on this and see what we did here it's a customer payment so that's that icon that shows that we received payment we received payment did not apply it to an invoice that was priorly created and therefore we have no reason quickbooks is saying hey you got no reason to have this money you didn't do anything to earn it so basically you owe the money back until you earn it until you create an invoice and say that i'm linking this invoice to this money we got and that's what quickbooks is waiting for us to do so i'm going to close this back out instead of creating a liability for 300 it created this negative asset so it's reducing our accounts receivable and quickbooks it's saying i'm sitting here waiting for you to tie this thing out to an invoice the way it properly you know should be and then we'll then we'll have it then it'll work it'll be in balance then so that's fine that works for quickbooks and that ties out the the receivables and that allows us to to tie the credit to the invoice and everything is great however when we report the financial statements, uh, it doesn't work well because it's not proper accrual basis. We shouldn't have a negative receivable. What we should have is an, an asset on the books for receivables and this liability asset showing that we owe something in the future. We owe work in the future or we have to pay back that $300. So what we need to do is just do a journal entry to take this out of accounts receivable and then put it into uh, the unearned revenue account. That's what we will do here. Typically, we would do that by going to the company tab up top and make journal entry. And once we make the journal entry, we would debit the accounts receivable, increasing it back for that negative amount in it, and then credit the liability account, a liability account we will create called unearned revenue. But we're going to do this with registers. So we're going to try doing this without debits and credits and just look at the registers in order to do this. So I'm going to close this back out and we're going to go back down here and note the accounts receivable red uh, account is here and note that we don't have any unearned revenue account yet if we go to the chart of accounts just to check the chart of accounts by going to view and i'm sorry going to lists and chart of accounts it should be in other current liabilities that we would have unearned revenue and we don't have one here so we're going to set that up. I'm going to set up unearned revenue, and then we're going to use that register in order to record this journal entry. So we're, we're in lists, and we're in chart of accounts, and we're going to go to account at the bottom and new. We're going to add a new account, and it's going to be an other current liability, so we'll select the item down here. We're going to make it other current liability account, and continue. And we're going to name it unearned revenue so it's an unearned revenue account it's going to be a liability account even though it has the name revenue in it so be careful there this is all we need within this window so we're going to say save and close and there is that amount now to go to the register we could double click on it but typically i close this out and just to show where the register i usually go to banking and use register and then select the drop down and we're going to go to the uh, other current liabilities that we have just made here and we're looking for unearned revenue there so we're going to select that and okay 
and then here is our register. So this is going to be a liability account. What we're going to do is increase this liability account by that amount uh, of the 300 that was uh, a negative receivable. So we'll go to the negative receivable. Let's open our report back up again. We'll go to the reports. We're going to go to the customers and receivables. And we're going to go to the customer balance detail right here. Scroll back down. It's going to be 300 for the string music. So we're going to go back to our unearned revenue and it's going to be an increase to the unearned revenue of 300 and the other side is, is going to go to accounts receivable. So I'm going to select the drop down, scroll up and we're looking for accounts receivable. Now this screen note, it's not allowing me to, to enter a customer for receivable. So when we select enter, it may not let me do it and I'll have to use this split screen down here but I'm going to show that as we go. Note that uh, when we use this register, it's a little confusing to know if we're increasing or decreasing the account. It would be easier actually to use debits and credits in the journal entry if we understand journal entries, but given there's only two accounts, we can use these registers and try to use a bit of trial and error to make it do what we want to do within these registers. So we're going to say record and it says, no, we got to choose a customer. So I'm going to say, okay, why does it do that? Well, it, it says that if I want something in accounts receivable, I'm going to go back to the balance sheet. It's telling me that this number right here has to be able to reconcile to the account, the sub, subsidiary account, which is the customer balance detail here. And it's telling us we can't do that unless you tell us a customer to apply it to. So it won't let us apply out anything to accounts receivable unless we choose a customer for that reason. So we're then going to go back to the unearned revenue and I'm going to select the split string, uh, account and we want to choose the customer. And if we go to the, the detail again, customer balance detail, we're looking for that string music. So that's the one back to unearned revenue and we're going to go to string music. So there it is. String music is the customer. If we select record now, it should do it. And there it is. And let's go and see if it does what we want it to do. What do we want it to do? We want it to have a liability account increasing by that 300. And we want it to increase the accounts receivable to reverse out that negative 300 amount. So if we close this back out, go back to the balance sheet, it should have increased uh, this amount. We'll check that in the detail. And if we go to the unearned revenue, there's the 300 liability. So there's the 300 liability representing the fact that we owe something in the future, that being service. If we don't do the work, we owe the 300 back. And the other side is going to be an accounts receivable. If we double click on that item, scroll down to the bottom, there's our adjusting entry. If we double click on that, there's our entry here. I'm going to close this back out, close this back out and then go to the customer balance detail scroll back down here it is right there so we're saying uh, we removed it in essence from the accounts receivable and put it into the liability and uh, that's how we're going to to deal with this and this would be back to the balance sheet the proper reporting of of that amount so quickbooks the way quickbooks does it is great for the functioning of it to tie everything out, we're just going to make this adjusting entry as of the end of the month for any of those negative receivables that are there so that when we look at the report, we can differentiate and see that we that we don't have a negative receivable. We've got receivables and we've got a liability that we owe a service in the future for.